So last year I hatched this gosling that was an absolute freak. And I don't call her a freak to be mean. I mean, she was actually kind of freaky. You see, when this gosling was hatched, she had kind of a crooked bill. It's actually a condition known as scissor beak where either a duck or a goose or a chicken has its bill sort of crossed and so they don't match up like normal mouths do. And it's all a little bit cockeyed. And early on, I tried to do a few things to correct the problem and make her better. Like I tried pinching her beak and making it straighten out, but it never held because her bones and her beak just were growing in that direction. And so as much as I tried, there was just no real way of helping her out. Which quite honestly made me kind of sad because really for the animals here on our farm, I want them to be able to live rich and full lives and really only have one one bad day if they're being raised for me. And I was worried about this bird making it successfully to adulthood without enough nurturing care and attention. By the way, you guys, complete side note and tangent. Did you notice that the cupola is up? And because we are a goose farm and not a goose sanctuary, I was really worried that I was not gonna be able to give her the attention that she needed here on our farm, nor was she gonna be able to stand up and handle the bullying that she would receive from all the other geese on our farm. So, what happened to her? Good morning, large white farm dogs. How are you guys doing? So good to see you both. Hi. Good dogs, good dogs. Come on, all the dogs inside. Uh-oh, looks like the dog water froze overnight. Not by much, but just a little bit. You can drink that if you want. I was able to hit my unfreeze button, and now you can drink. How's my Toby dog this morning, huh? You doing good, pal? You gotta stop crowding out here. The Toby dog, Abby dog relationship is probably worth addressing, but that's probably like a whole video topic unto itself that I'll cover in a future video. But yeah, it was actually kind of cold last night. I think uh, it's like 28 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Yeah, the ground's frosted up. Come on, dogs, let's go see our birds. Morning, birds! What was that that got their attention? You see that? They just like wigged out. What was that? Oh, I saw what it was. Okay, I didn't catch it on camera. Well, there's actually been like an eagle that's been living over near the farm and like I've seen it around a couple of times and I think it just flew overhead like I feel like I just saw it go that away and it definitely got Toby's attention and you can actually see him out there over by the beehives it's kind of standing guard right now watching and waiting for it to come back I mean it long since went that away so I'm not too worried but that's what got his attention for sure come on Abby I think bird patrol might be just you and me today Toby dog's got work to do and it's not that Abby dog doesn't have work to do she just gets more easily distracted Distracted. When something gets Toby Dog's attention, it'll get Abby Dog's attention, but then it might not keep Abby Dog's attention because she's got a lot more ADHD like me. Come on, sweetie, let's go. You can come, pal. So our birds have actually hit a milestone here this spring in that they are now officially free ranging 24 seven. I don't close that door anymore. It just stays open for them. Come on, Abby Dog. Oop. You hear that? It's the call of the loon. Another sign of spring. But yeah, the birds now have full-time outdoor access here. But as I've said in previous videos, I am doing it a little bit differently than I have done in years past. So for example, last year, when they got access to pasture, it was basically they got access to all 10 acres of our pasture. This year, that's not the case. Over the last, like, I don't know, two weeks or so, they've had their access restricted by this poly wire, and they could float in their little stream here, but they couldn't get anywhere else. But but now, I have actually just completed some new fencing work. So I've been putting up this welded wire fencing as a way to make like a little bit of a paddock. And if you wanna see what this paddock looks like, it basically extends for, I don't know, I'd say this is more than an acre. So it's like a one acre paddock inside of here. I have this poor man's gate that I've put in right here. But if I just kind of phase through it here, what you'll see is I've actually laid fence posts out to go all the way across this side of the pasture here. And so this whole area with the pond will be a paddock. This area here that the birds have access to right now will be a paddock. And then the actual permaculture orchard itself will be a whole paddock for them as well. You know, as I've said in previous videos, I'm realizing that part of taking good care of the land is restricting access for the animals from the land. And it's one of the things I'm trying to do a better job of this year, particularly with the poultry. By having these harder fences, it's gonna make it easier to rest different parts of the farm on a more regular basis this year. But at the same time, with this new expanded paddock, they're not gonna go stir crazy just being stuck in their winter area. I think as you guys saw in the last video, those ducks were going crazy and they really wanted to get out. Of course, I am still getting outdoor eggs. Yeah, and see, these are like covered in dew and so I don't feel good about selling these so I got to solve a problem here you know the ones that are getting laid in the hay I'm actually willing to hang on to yeah this one's good this one even feels warm look at that that's about as clean a runner duck egg as you can get also it feels very very fresh and very warm so those are good this one also follows that 
perfect pattern. But then, you, 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 So yeah, right here we have quite literally the dirty dozen, and these are the clean ones. So while these dirty dozen are going to go to waste in the sense that I can't sell them, but they're not truly going to go to waste because they will end up being either pig food or dog food. But I will say that what you just saw there is a reason why I feel like the duck egg business is a tough business to be in. So this little scissor build gosling was one that I was really worried about and struggling to figure out what to do with. I didn't want to raise her here because I knew she'd get beaten up and bullied and I couldn't give her the feeding attention that she was going to need. I also knew that if I was going to keep her here, I wouldn't be able to keep her into next year because of the fact that her scissor bill condition was probably genetic and I didn't want her risking passing those genes down to another goose. And so that meant I would have had to cull her last fall as a meat bird, but because she was having problems with eating, I was really concerned with her gaining enough Enough weight with all of the other birds as food competition and so because of that I made the decision that as she was getting into her teenage years that I needed to rehome her and find another place for her to live Abby Abby don't get yourself into trouble and so that's why I put out the call to say hey does anybody want this crooked mouth gosling and that's when my friend Jess sent me a text and said "Ooh, I would like that gosling what you doing there Ron Swanson <laughs> Sitting on a nest? Yeah. Looks there's a duck egg and a chicken egg in there. Were you laying an egg there, Ronnie? For those who might be new to our YouTube channel, Ron Swanson is the duck who thinks she's a goose. And yes, she's a she. I like to call them by the wrong name to let them know I don't really care about them. Hey, how's it going there, Mother Goose? Still sitting on your nest of futility? I see what you got underneath you. Hey, Goose the Goose. I was just checking on her nest. Yeah, Bruce the Goose does not like when I check on the nest. So she actually does have, I think, a couple of duck eggs and a goose egg underneath her. I'm going to let her continue to do that. You know, I've tried several times now to just break up her nest and, like, not let her sit on that nest. And there's no breaking her of it. So I think my best bet is just to let her continue sitting on that nest and see what it produces. You know, despite all the pig eggs that I collected this morning, I still have eight duck eggs and four goose eggs that came out this morning as well. The goose eggs are coming just in time because I'm going to put another batch of eggs in the incubator at the end of this video. <laughs> now that the birds have more access to pasture, I'm finding that they're a lot less hungry at feeding time, which is another good thing. Did you guys see that? Both Abby Dog and Toby Dog always feel like they have to inspect the duck food before they let the birds eat it. They know enough not to eat it themselves, they just need to inspect it. It's kind of weird. I tried to make it so that Abby would have a weird moment chicken of zen with the weird chickens, but I think it both makes the weird chickens uncomfortable and Abby looks like she thinks she's on punishment. Oh, poor Abby, you look like you're in jail. Abby, I'm so proud of your behavior right there. You've been such a good girl. Come on out. Good girl. I swear, this is the time of year where I feel like I have to dress for two occasions. One before sun comes up and then one afterwards because now it's warming up. I'll be sweating pretty soon. <laughs> you know, when I used to commute to work, I used to always wonder why I'd find like five hoodies buried in my truck. And it was always because I would like need it in the morning and then not need it in the afternoon. And there you have it. So for the first time since the day that the pigs arrived at the farm, I'm having to feed them some pellets. You know, pretty much for the entire time that the pigs have been here, they've been eating brewer's grains as the majority of their diet. That mixed with some kitchen scraps as well as waste eggs. I'm getting more grains tomorrow, but I ran out yesterday, so I'm gonna have to supplement today. But I had some takeout last night, so I have some leftover french fries from last night's dinner. Here you go, Toby. You can have a french fry. Abby, you can have a french fry too. Oh, Ginny, ow! <laughs> Not feel good to have Ginny climb on a t-shirt. And no, Ginny, we have a strict no french fry policy for cats on this farm. Would you look at that? My pigs are still sleeping. I find that they're not early risers like the other animals. Let's go wake them up. Good morning, guys. How's it going? Yeah, they sleep a lot, but once they're awake, they're awake. How are my little Piggly Wigglies this morning, huh? How's everybody doing? All right, you eat this feed one out all the way. Looks like you got a little bit of food left in this one. You sure have a lot to say, Phil Leotardo. 20 years in the can. Still trying to come up with names for these two. Sopranos names, male or female. You take your pick. But I want the funniest characters. Hey, don't eat me there. Yeah, they've been pooping and scratching and making a whole mess of this area. I actually just put down some fresh straw yesterday because 
It's really starting to stink in here. Kind of like an honest to goodness pigsty. I'm gonna say that they probably still have another two weeks of work within this space before they move on to going into the woods. And maybe it'll only be one week and they'll get some time off for good behavior. I'd like to do it over, boy, let me tell you. I do feel like this is the perfect house for them, particularly with the number of pigs I have. Three is the maximum number that work for this pig loo. And I'm not sure how well it will work come summertime, but I might not need it all that much that time of year either, so. It's all about trade-offs. So Pig Lou has been a success, but oh golly. Did you look at that? Now that's not a success. It looks like they broke off the nozzle. Yeah, I'm gonna have to just pull this all out. I tried fixing it again the other day. It created some problems for me. Yeah, this water trough is not working at all for me. Just goes to show you, you might see something on the internet and it looks good, but then what you're gonna find is it actually doesn't work all that well for you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to empty this out and completely rebuild it. I think that's gonna be the plan. Here, until then, you guys can get a drink of water that way. Did you break that? Did you break it? I think it was you who broke it there, Phil. Okay, okay, I know we're gonna have some hungry, hungry piggies here. Here, you're gonna miss out on the best part. French fries are the best part, come on. Just as a little bit of an update, I know a lot of folks had some really good advice when it comes to Phil Leotardo and that bubble that forms on the bottom of her belly. And after doing a bit more research, I know that it is now actually a hernia. And it's basically an umbilical hernia, which is not that dissimilar than the hernia that Abby Dog had. As far as doing the research goes, it seems like based on the placement and the size, it's not really a problem, but I do need to watch for it and monitor it and make sure it doesn't get too much bigger or impact her quality of life at all. And whereas with Abby, I absolutely was going to pay a vet to do some surgery and correct the problem. With this pig, I am not going to do that you know this is a feeder pig that's really only meant to be on our farm until the fall anyway and so my goal is to raise her well treat her right keep her healthy watch it closely if it becomes a problem and is impacting her way of life we'll probably end up harvesting her early but if it goes all summer and it doesn't present any problems she'll just get harvested in the fall like we originally planned number one vets who do surgery on pigs are a little bit far and few between and number two from a financial perspective it makes like zero sense. The value of the meat that she would produce would get canceled out and then some by doing the surgery. And so I'm just better off just harvesting her if it presents to be a problem. Which brings me back to my crooked build gosling. So my friend Jess, who lives here in Vermont, you know, she has a backyard flock of ducks and chickens and she didn't have any geese at her place. And so because she already had ducks, adding a goose into the mix wasn't gonna be a whole heck of a lot of extra work. And so last summer, Jess and her partner came to the farm, they picked her up, and they brought her back to their place. And initially, she was doing really, really good on their farm. But what has happened since then? Yes, she has absolutely flourished at Jess's little homestead, and so it's totally a perfect situation. Her name is Hisami, which is Japanese for scissor, I believe, which given her wonky beak is absolutely the perfect name for her. And so I am very pleased to report that she is happy and healthy and living her best life on a new homestead. Now, for those of you guys wondering about Hobo Cat, Jimi Hendrix, and the White Cow, those are topics for a future episode of Unsolved Farm Mysteries. Speaking of animals living their best lives, would you look at these two? I'm just basking in the sun. <laughs> it really makes me so happy to see that. Hey, Pablo Barncat. Sizing up your new home? I know, it's looking really good. Even with that overhang, I'm super excited about this. And I know Pablo is very, very excited about it as well. 
So here's the difference between my two dogs. So Abby dog scarfed her french fry in a matter of seconds. Toby dog likes to guard his french fry and watch over it for a period of time before eating it. Yes, they are two dogs of the same breed, but they have very different personalities. So it is time to check on our eggs. The uh, eggs are just leveling themselves out right now. The incubator I have actually has like an auto turning feature. And so that's what's happening when that goes like that. So what I'm gonna be doing today is candling the eggs as well as setting a new batch of eggs. So these eggs are, gosh, I think about, hold on, let me refer to my calendar here that I've been keeping. Batch one went in 18 days ago. Batch two went in nine days ago. And so now we're gonna add batch three. I'm doing my egg hatching a little bit differently than I've done in years past, where it's a rolling calendar. Usually what I've done is waited as long as I could, collected as many eggs as I could, and then just tried to hatch them. And I did like maybe one or two waves. This year I'm expecting to do about four waves, but my hope is that that improves my hatching rate as well as gets me more adult birds by the end of the season. Time will tell on that one. And yeah, so the way the system works is batch one starts on the top shelf and moves its way down. And so first I'm gonna candle these guys. Oh, this one's developing really nicely. Yeah, that one's not developing. That yeah, one looks pretty good. This one's gone. So what I'm looking for in this part is Number one, that I'm still seeing like veins forming and like growth, as well as the air sac getting bigger and bigger. That means that the baby bird is drawing down on the food inside the egg. And so that's a good sign of development. If the air sac is too small at this stage of the game, that usually means it's not developing. And so that's when I'll usually pull those eggs. Back in the day when I was doing my earliest hatches, I used to like rush through the candling process and be terrified to have them outside of the incubator for too long because I was worried about what might happen to them. What what I've now come to realize is it's totally normal for them to be out and so now I really try to take my time and focus on how I do the candling because I found it's a very important part of the hatching process. Hard lessons learned. All right, so now batch one is gonna go onto the third shelf. Now let's check on our little ones from batch two. And I just totally realized I screwed that up and I put batch one on the wrong shelf. Derp, 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 derp. So when I came up to this room, I noticed it stunk a little bit over the last two days. And I think I figured out why. For whatever reason, this egg just cracked. I don't even wanna like mess around with it too much because it could explode and it could be just absolutely disgusting. So we're just already pulling that one out. It's an immediate goner. And I know there's gonna be folks who are like, well, maybe there's a bird hatching. Trust me, there's no bird hatching. That's a dead egg. Oh, Yeah, that is just foul goopness. And it stinks to high heaven. Whew. All right, let's turn off the lights and commence the candling. Ooh, that one's looking good. That one's looking very promising. So is that one. Let me get right in there. Yeah, you can see that. That's like such good vein development. That hopefully will turn into a gosling. We will be hatching some goslings very soon. And so if you want to see that happen, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'll be back with you guys in another video and more action from the farm very soon. Good night, little birds.